If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out of the box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multi Amory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi Amory Podcast, we are talking about masculinity and polyamory. We're uncovering some of the fundamentals of masculinity and looking at how this can both be negative and positive in certain ways as it relates to polyamorous ideas and thoughts. And uh, also, video is back. We hit our yes. goal. We hit our goal on Patreon, which was that we would start doing video podcasts again. So if you're listening to this right now and are like, you know what, I would much rather watch them on their webcams than go to our YouTube channel or our website. And you can watch the video version of this podcast. You can see me lounging in my my temporary throne that I have here. Yeah, I'm I'm not in a throne. Nor am okay. I. <laughs> I have I have the perfect thing to kind of I have the perfect thing to kind of segue us into this topic, as it were. Okay. So yeah. talking talking about video, visual medium, yeah. Mm-hmm. Talking about masculinity, talking about men and boys, and all those all those men type and of boys. Chats. Okay. Third thing, it's Halloween. Or by the time this episode oh. has come out, it will have just been Halloween. So yeah, before yes. we kind of dig into this topic properly, what do we think about sexy male Halloween costumes? They're great. Sexy male Halloween okay, costumes. Okay, first of all, be- but tell me, but tell me, give me examples of sexy male Halloween costumes because we we all know the shtick that with a woman she can just like slap on whatever skimpy thing and yeah. you know what's the joke for Mean Girls? That she can just wear lingerie and an animal ears and then she's good to go. You know, like yeah, sure, we got it. Like. Like, ladies wear sexy Halloween costumes. But what are the sexy dude costumes? I mean, you could be a sexy superhero. Like, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people that I know have done sexy superhero costumes. Right. Didn't, it, it didn't uh, Johnny, like, have a Captain America shield that he just placed over his <laughs> scantily clad body? And well, yeah, he, he did, like, the, you know, there's, there's sort of been this... I want to see pictures this... of that. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, was, I feel like you were there for that one, but yeah, there was Why that. Not? There was there's kind of a thing in the in the in parts of the nerd community of guys doing versions of superheroes that are like in the style of female outfits for superheroes. Mm. So it's like you know he was Captain America, but with like little booty shorts on, and like you yeah. know what I mean. Like it, it's kind of um, <laughs> I don't know taking that like switch. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can find pictures if you search for this online of for you sure. know people from Comic Con or whatever guys doing like the sexy version of different superheroes and stuff. It's like doing like the like the sexualized version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of it. Mm-hmm. exactly. Which um, is the way that like normal female superheroes are usually portrayed. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that is kind of the point of it to be like, hey, you know, Same. look at this difference here. Um, I don't know. I feel like. When I did my Red Sun Superman, normal, not oh, yeah, not yeah. a feminized yeah, or like sexy. scandally I mean, clad. It wasn't, it wasn't super sexualized, but it was sexy. It wasn't sexualized, yeah. but I still did get a lot of of comments from people that I know and of people being like, "That's a really sexy costume." I guess cause it's like because it's like very form fitting. It's like you know? yeah. form fitting, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, how's that? And you know, Russian know. like Russian always makes me think of sex. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Doesn't Does it, it do it for you? <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Commun- communism for Scherzies. Well, yeah, obviously. Well, it also. Gets, gets the panties dropping. Yeah. <laughs> Josh and I have done gender swapped costumes the last two years, which yeah. I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's gone as like the female character and I've gone as the male character, but right. then we kind of like put a masculine or feminine twist on it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Like last That's year right. we went as Mario and Princess Peach, but he was Prince Peach and I was Lady Mario. Right. <laughs> but he was still but his Prince Peach, even though it was technically masculine, I mean it was still it was still quite androgynous ish, I suppose. Yeah, androgynous. Really androgynous. That's a yeah. great yeah. new term. Androgynous. Yeah. I really like that. 
Exactly. But I feel like androgynous already captures what androgynous is trying to convey. That's true. Yeah. You probably don't need to add the ish. Yeah, we don't need the softener unless we're speaking in Japanese, as it were. <laughs> yeah, the little androgyny. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so... Anyway, well, sorry to get us off on a Halloween tangent, but... Yes. We actually get hope you had fun. Halloween, hope mm-hmm. you had some good, clean fun. Yeah, I hope everyone had a good Halloween. I know that I yeah. did. Uh, yeah. So, so what? one of the things that inspired this topic... I mean, this is a topic that we've been wanting to cover for quite a while... Um, because I think it's it's incredibly relevant to to all of our lives, whether we're polyamorous or not. It's kind of this idea of what masculinity is, like what it means to be masculine. And a lot of times in the poly community, masculinity is talked about as as sort of a universally bad thing, or maybe talked mm-hmm. about in the way that it tries to put down or control women. But the focus of this episode, you know, we'll talk about some of that, but it's a little bit more about how enforcing masculinity on men is hurtful to the men as well. And that it's mm-hmm. kind of that that feminism isn't just something that would benefit women if we were all behind it, but actually would benefit all of us. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of the, the overarching theme here. And part of this was inspired by um, an email that Franklin Vo posted online that he received uh Dedeker did you want to did you want to talk about that did you have that up oh uh, yeah no I mean honestly I I don't really want to justify this person by reading their email aloud mm. um I'd rather just summarize <laughs> okay, it but basically sure. it was you know it was it was an email from a hater um basically basically saying like dude like I can tell just by looking at you that you're a beta you know if a girl mm-hmm, like a girl's just trying to keep you around as an option um, you know, you need to hang around some alpha males, and if a girl tells you she's poly, then you just need to dump her. Um, so, but but he definitely, you know, he only commented on it a little bit, but specifically talking about mm-hmm. that, the fact that there was like this specific targeted thing of like, oh, you're beta, like you're beta male, you're not an alpha male because you're poly, yeah. because the woman that you're with is sleeping around with other people, right? That you're not in control of her or something, and even yeah. the idea and of so, like alpha you know, beta. Well, yeah. This shitty. <laughs> Just, like, to throw that on men at yeah. all. Be like, oh, you have to be an alpha male. Yeah, like, that's yeah. your ideal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, definitely. So, um, and, but it, it got, what it got me thinking about is the fact that there is kind of this contradiction specifically with polyamorous men. Mm-hmm. Because the fact that it's like on one side you can look at it and be like, oh, here's a man who has a lot of partners, and especially if it's a lot of female partners, um, right? Like, wow, that's that's really hyper masculine. He's banging a bunch of ladies, mm-hmm. um, you know. Like Polly is maybe the most masculine thing you can do. But then on the <laughs> other side, the fact that like, well, these ladies are also banging dudes that aren't you. Well, yeah. you know, that's like that's cuckolding. That's clearly something that only a beta you know, only a beta male could allow. allow. And, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, we really wanted to dig into this topic because it's this interesting contradiction for men who are within the poly mm-hmm. scene. Yeah. Right. And I mean, we're, let's not even go into right now the idea of of poly people sort of being poly, opening up possibilities of exploring the fluidity of your sexuality. Like that's, that's even further on the side of like, Oh, Mm -hmm. like that's not masculine. You're, you're a wuss. Like that's not okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's even, but just even if it's just in heterosexual relationships, there's still kind of this judgment that can get put on it of like, Oh man, you're, you're being such a pussy or you're such a beta because you know, you're not owning these women entirely that they're sleeping Mm -hmm. with other dudes. Um, so, yeah, then on the other side of it, though, even, you know, from women, there can be that judgment, essentially the same judgment of like, oh, well, you just want to be a player because you're poly and sleep with all these women and like not commit to any of them like, ugh, gross. Or is this the the opposite side is the positive i guess so like from either side like it's still those two sides but Mm. the positives and negatives are switched yeah yeah so that's interesting that 
you know, it seems like, well, first of all, our standards for masculinity, uh, clearly, like, they aren't really doing men any favors, particularly, you know, men mm-hmm. who do choose to kind of step outside of the box and pursue non-traditional relationships. Um, so, you know, we want to kind of go into just a quick kind of deconstruction of what our society, like, says masculinity is. Um, and, of mm-hmm. course, like, we want to give the disclaimer that obviously, like, not all men are this way. Yeah, hashtag not all men. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, right. of course, every man is an individual. Um, mm-hmm. But something that, you know, Kathy Labriola, who we've had on this podcast before, she's a poly counselor and therapist. Um, she made a point once that, you know, even if you don't necessarily identify as terribly masculine or terribly feminine, or even if you're genderqueer, or if you don't identify with what your anatomical sex is, you know, mm-hmm. um, even if you define your own gender non-traditionally, it still can be so, so hard to deprogram the things that are taught you by socialization, um, which yeah. is a lot of what gender is. Right. Definitely. Like we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, how differently toys are marketed to boys and girls and yeah. that, you know, regardless of how you identify later in life from an early age, you're given these certain types of words, certain types of images based on your gender. Um, and so, yeah, it is it is a very hard thing to deprogram um before we get into kind of our like talking about what masculinity means like like dedeker said you know it's not the same for all men this is not the point of this is not that these are traits that describe men at all actually but that these are the traits that socially are kind of enforced upon men that Mm -hmm. if you don't fit these sort of things you can be criticized for it right called names not a real or, man you know or could could be beaten up or like whatever right that these are the sort of things that are enforced upon us and the the elusive thing about it is that you know we're taught as boys to be a man like be a man is such a common thing and even as adults it's a thing that gets that gets thrown around but it's not really clear what being a man means Means. like it can mean different sometimes contradictory things in different contexts and it's this really unfortunate situation that we've set up where we're taught as men to be pursuing this idea of being a man and being masculine but there's not even a clear definition of what that is right Mm -hmm. that it's this sort of elusive unattainable thing that we're meant to feel bad about not living up to um, so it is sort of this problematic thing, but, but going into that, like, what are some traits though, that, that you do think of as, you know, masculinity? Like what, what is that? Like a strong physical, physically, like very strong human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, That's like, like a like, manly thing. Yeah. Right. Like a man, like manly shoulders, like broad shoulders, broad chest, <laughs> you know, big tall. Pecs. Yeah. Big pecs, yeah. big rippling <laughs> sure. pecs and abs, maybe a little bit sweaty, kind of like the sweat. The- yeah. Right, like sort of the superhero concept of, yeah. or like action yeah. hero concept of what a man looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is something we also talked about is being respected, right? So mm-hmm. rather than, than, I mean, maybe the action hero, but even, you know, in our movies, we'll see it's the, you know, the high powered business person or something, yeah. right? That mm-hmm. everyone looks up to. Um, there's they're, the alpha again. Right, they're alpha. They're yeah. they're powerful and they're respected by other men yeah. and by women, right? Um, um what also else? that they might be like intimidating. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. nobody's gonna fuck with them. Sure. Yeah. That that idea yeah. of like nobody fucking with you is definitely yes. definitely one yeah. of those things. Almost a little like fear based potentially. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. just to maybe like so utterly respected that nobody is going to mess with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? Um. Well, so no one will fuck with you unless you want them to, <laughs> and they are a beautiful lady. <laughs> um, uh-huh. As in, yes, like very virile, like being a player, um, like mm-hmm. being very sexually mm-hmm. active, like able to get a lot of women, able to seduce women, you know, able to have as able to get a lot of wants. sex. Yeah. Like, yeah. Lots of sex like definitely yeah it's, able it's to to, to be real technical about that one too it also carries over into needing to be able to have an erection at any time and yeah. that if yes. if you don't yeah. that's something that men will beat themselves up about or try to go yeah. to these mm-hmm. extreme lengths to fix this problem 
Um, you know, yeah. cause that is part of yeah. this idea of being a, a masculine man is that like, yeah. you can have sex at the drop of a hat anytime, right? That like yeah. phys- yeah, physically yeah, yeah, yeah. you're able to do You're just like so that. dripping with testosterone at any moment. Right, that, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I mean, another one that, that really, you know, resonates for me is this idea of never showing weakness, mm-hmm. um, or, or being stoic and never crying. Right. Like, and that one's like. Yeah, from a young age, men are taught that for sure. Right, like boys don't cry, the whole stereotypical yeah. thing, um, right, of that that all of your negative emotions need to be under control. Like, it's okay to be angry, but not to be sad, mm. yeah. right? It's not okay to be scared or sad, but anger's okay, because you need to get it out somehow, so that's the outlet that we're given. Um, yeah, I'm gonna beat someone up. Right, beat someone up, or I'm going to break something, or I'm going to yell, or right, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And then also the idea that the ideal man should be wealthy, needs to be rich, mm-hmm. because or we a have provider, yeah, and be a provider, right. But part of that is also I, I've definitely found that myself and and other guys will really beat themselves up personally over not having money over not mm-hmm. being rich that it's not just like i wish i had money because i wish i had money but it's yeah. like a personal value judgment of your self like your own worth as a as a man is tied to yeah. money as well cuz again look at our representations in you know in movies and books and stuff like that like tv shows you know almost everyone's Basically, got Bruce quite well, look, a bit of money. No, I was going to say like like Tony Stark is who I thought of. I was like yeah, sure. yeah, yeah like Tony Bruce Stark Wayne. is like the com- like it hits every single one of these on the list. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. but here's the funny part though, is that it's not just those sort of obvious examples of super rich like Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne, but even just if you watch your normal TV shows, everyone owns a house. Or owns an apartment, for example. Like, even that level of wealth is just, like, if you don't have that, if a, if a guy character lives with roommates, for example, he's generally going to be the guy who either by the end of that thing is going to grow to, like, own his own place and be more successful in business and money, mm. or... Um, like, or he's just the Seth character Rogen who's sort of up. like, uh, that guy, uh, exactly. Like Seth yeah, Rogen and knocked even, up. I didn't even think about trajectory. that. Yeah, right. but that's a good point. He, the, like, uh, in order to win the girl, mm-hmm. he has to like be exactly. out of his roommate's house, and yeah, he has to figure like, out how to make a, money, get a job. Yep. Yeah, yep. And totally. like not and like not living with his like family, like not living like with his parents or his grandparents. Yeah. Right. Oh God, that's even worse. Like that. Yeah, of course. That's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, but kind of this <laughs> this idea of of you know everyone on TV has these big big houses or big apartments, and really they only have apartments if they live in New York in the show. Um, but pretty much anywhere else, even if the show takes place in Los Angeles, they almost always own a house, which is something yeah. that just blows my mind. Yeah, it's like, I was. I'm no sorry, this is like a total houses. tangent. In, yeah, I know. In Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, like his uh-huh. love interest is like a struggling actress, and she like has a house on Venice Beach. Um, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, right. Like, and right. with that movie, as as great as that movie is, that's always what kills like my suspension of disbelief. Yeah. So I'm like, come on, come on, yeah. come yeah. on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. let's hop back into this. Um, so we just talked about all you know. We kind of painted with a broad brush this idea mm-hmm. of masculinity the and, and kind of yeah, the broadest of brushes. All these things have been handed down to men. Well, and to mm-hmm. women, you know, this also gets kind of injected into women's expectations of men as well. Um, right. For sure. We're definitely not immune in this. Um, but what I wanted to think about was like, obviously, not all of these traits are necessarily bad things. Mm-hmm. You know, being a provider is not a bad thing. Um, you know, being respected is definitely not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And so I was wondering, what are the traits of masculinity that are healthy? And specifically, you know, what are the traits of masculinity that are are actually the most useful for men who are involved in non-monogamous relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say probably emotional management is a good one. And it, I've heard it, and probably this is also just social conditioning, but a lot of people will say, like, you know, I love hanging out with guys because they're not petty, they're not flippant, mm-hmm. they're not, like you know, passive aggressive, if they have an issue, then they just tell you right away, like, hey, this is fucked up, let's not do that. 
Yeah, um, yeah, I hadn't put so, that together, but I've definitely heard that yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, no, I mean, from that standpoint, like, I, I've definitely used that argument, like, mm-hmm. oh, it's fun hanging out with men just because, like, they're not passive, and I appreciate that. They're not right. going to, like, stab you in the back, which is not necessarily fair or true that women would do that all over the place, but it is I mean, nice and to have, also like, to, emotional to be devil's management. advocate, I've mm-hmm. definitely yeah. met some very passive-aggressive men. Um, true. <laughs> well, but that's, that's the thing we need to remember here, is that, that both of these are not true of all men or all women. No. The point yeah. is, though, that our social conditioning does encourage men to be straightforward and more confrontational, and does encourage yes. women mm-hmm. to not do that. Um, sure. Which then can lead to feeling like, backstabbing or being passive aggressive or something and absolutely there's passive aggressive men and there's very men. direct women most of whom of i end up being attracted to like the two of you yeah exactly <laughs> it's like you're sitting with two of them. Yeah, yeah exactly um but right that idea of that we talked about it earlier is like a negative thing right about not never showing weakness like never crying being stoic all the time but there is something to be said for the positive version of that which is Having some emotional management, right? Some a little bit mm-hmm. of control over, like, I'm not going to just freak out and get upset Blunt, right away. Yeah. I'm going to kind of mm. hold on to this for a moment and figure out what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, when you try to hold it in all the time, it does come out a lot as anger, as we were talking yeah. about earlier. But yeah, no, that's that's definitely one that is, yeah, mm-hmm. as an example of a very good trait of being kind of direct. And I think that goes into... Yeah. To the next one, Dedeker, did you want to talk about that? Yeah, the, like I, I feel like because of the fact that like men are socialized to be much more direct and to be much more vocal and to like to not be scared necessarily to speak up about things, that that makes them just much better at advocating for their own needs mm-hmm. within a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I do feel like like that is a masculine trait that is extremely useful um, within non-monogamous relationships because of the fact mm-hmm. that like you do have to negotiate and express your boundaries. You do have to negotiate yeah. what it is that you want, what it is that you mm-hmm. don't want. You do have to have that willingness and that courage to just directly say to your partner, hey, this is what I want. This is or, what hey, I want. I'm yeah. not getting, yeah. yeah, or hey, I'm not getting what it is that I need. And mm-hmm. I feel like women tend to be socialized more in the opposite direction of like, don't rock the boat don't make waves. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. if you do need something like that, don't be confrontational Mm -hmm. about it. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I I would say that that probably is like a trait of, you know, quote unquote, classic masculinity that is actually quite helpful in non-monogamous relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it also, I'm sorry, my my mind just went in like 10 different directions at once, like hearing you talk about that. Um, Yeah, like this idea of kind of speaking up for what you need and what you want. I feel like something to to be aware of, though, is that the language that we use in asking for it, um, mm. that that I think sort of the dark side of that, though, is is if it's not asking for what you need or want, but sort of demanding it kind of mm. the, the difference mm-hmm. between self-advocacy and entitlement. Um, and I think that and I think that. This is something that actually the three of us were talking about before is kind of the difference in the type of language that men and women are taught to use about about yeah. what they want, especially when it comes to sex mm. um, is kind of the yeah. the more sort of direct, you could even say like harsher language that men are taught to use. Um, yeah. You know, not taught by our parents or teachers, but taught by our movies and our, um, mm. you know, the porn that's out there and by what our friends would say, right? Like using kind of harsher language that can be that even if the woman you're talking to might ultimately want the same things as you, because, you know, women actually do like sex just as much as men do. Many, many studies have shown this. As it turns out. (laughs) As it turns out, uh, both genders like sex, which is crazy, right? Um, But the, the, she might even want that same thing, but if you approach it with that sort of masculine language that we're taught, it's like, ugh, it's very, like, off-putting and doesn't make a woman feel like she's going to get anything enjoyable for herself out of that sex. So it's like, well, yeah. I'd rather not have that then because it doesn't seem like it's something that's going to be good for me too, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I think there's sort of that other side of, like, it's it's good to vouch for what you need, but... Yeah. But... 
you know, doing it in a way that's lifting lifting everyone up and it's like, hey, look, there's going to be awesome stuff in this for both of us <laughs> instead yeah. of just for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one last thing before we move on from this that I wanted to point out. We talked a couple episodes ago, we talked about the idea of using one's own privilege for good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think, honestly, I think that is the biggest thing um, that like traditionally masculine males can bring to the polyamorous community is this idea of like yes like i do have multiple girlfriends and yes they all do have multiple boyfriends and yes that's Mm -hmm. freaking great um Mm -hmm. right like the the fact that like especially as like a white you know heterosexual male that like Mm -hmm, your voice is going to be listened to more and carry more weight than anybody else's um and so to have more voices like that you know like more of the franklin that's really of the world powerful thing mm-hmm. yeah or like Dwayne layman or like you jace you know like more, more of the jace lindgren <laughs> more yeah more oh. of the jace lindgrens to be to be very vocal about that of of you know of mm-hmm. not um you know not necessarily wrapping it up in a rhetoric that's surrounded by feminism or sensitivity or anything like that but being like sure I'm yeah just... i'm a normal dude and like i'm fine right. with this and it doesn't threaten me at all yeah, uh, there's something in in that that you just said too about not being reactionary and feeling some need to like fight against what's you know what's already existing or what's going on, but just kind of being an example of like, hey, like I'm a very comfortable, confident man, so I'm gonna give an example to my friends and the people that know me to show, yeah. hey, here's a different way you could do it. Because uh, yeah. something I've definitely found is that regardless of what sort of labels people put on masculinity or these traits, if you're just comfortable being you, that's a very masculine thing. I I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, that's something that other men are going to look at that and go, fuck, like that guy seems so much more manly than me. And they don't might not know why they might try to come up with these other reasons or argue against you or something, but it's really just that comfortableness in your own skin, that confidence. Yeah, well, th- there is something to masculinity that comes in a sense of ownership. And I mean, that can be like bad ownership, mm-hmm. you know, that can be like mm-hmm. ownership over my girlfriend or ownership over this place or ownership over all my things. But with masculinity comes a sense of ownership of myself. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, here I am. Right. And like, I'm confident and bold and, and this is who I am. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's and that that's that's hugely powerful. That just Mm -hmm. and again, I think it comes from this idea that, you know, we're all taught to that we need to try to be a man. But like that definition is so elusive and so contradictory and like it's really unattainable, like it's impossible to really even be that like. And so I think that people who are concerned with being manly, like we're all taught to be, there is sort of this constant feeling of like I can never be comfortable or confident because I'm never living up to this ideal of what I should be Mm -hmm. as a man. And so I think kind of having that confidence is why that can also be threatening to other guys as well, but but is also something that they admire at the same time of just yeah. kind of being like, hey, like, I'm comfortable being this or even, you know, showing other guys that you're comfortable with women in positions of authority, right? If you have a female boss or something yeah. that like to just be a good example of like, yeah, of course, sure. She's my boss because she's my boss. Like it has nothing to do yeah. with gender at all it's just like that's just what it is and i'm totally cool and comfortable with it um yeah for sure yeah yeah considering Um, that like more than half of my bosses are women (laughs) where i work i'm also like yeah great do we do we count as bosses to you (laughs) (laughs) maybe at certain moments well yeah certain moments yes we'll see (laughs) we'll see anytime we're doing something that you guys don't like i'm the boss making you do it (laughs) It's so true. <laughs> the rest of the time, you guys yeah, are the bosses. Get, like, angry, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to, when for us to wrap this up, I want to mm-hmm. bring it back to kind of something you mentioned at the beginning, Jace, which was about, you know, if we relax our ideas around sexuality for mm-hmm. both men and women, that and especially for women, it makes it better for all of us. Um, so, Emily, yeah. you had something interesting about this. Oh, yeah, no, just the... Um, it, the fact that like women tend to be tenderness entitled but sexually repressed whereas men are on the other side they're they tend to be sexually entitled but tenderness repressed 
Um, and so essentially, like, women, it, just whatever age you are, can touch another woman or, like, even kiss another woman or hold their hands and, like, not necessarily be called bisexual or lesbian. Um, mm-hmm. But men, if they, you know, from a very young age, that's kind of stamped out of them if they're, you know... Right. hugging and kissing on their boyfriends you know mm-hmm. from a very young age and not even necessarily in like a sexual manner but it's kind of taught like no that's not okay yeah it's not okay to have these like feminine responses or tender responses towards another male right i, I had a gay if you do exactly you know? yeah i had a time yeah. in uh in middle school where i was had some friends over and i was sitting on my bed with my arm like around a guy friend yeah. Um, you know, and I was whatever, 13 or something probably. And like, um, later, like had a talk with my stepdad or he had a talk with me oh, wow. about like being concerned oh, wow. about that behavior. Yeah. Jeez. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Seriously? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Being, yeah, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's where I kind of got the, the, the talk at that time about like, you know, we're not sure that, you know, you would go to hell for being gay, but, like, we do think it makes God sad, at least. Like, oh, my God. Right? That, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's not, it's not sad. funny. It's not funny. It's, but the it's phrasing not, is but funny. it is funny. <laughs> it is funny funny. <laughs> looking back. But um, yeah. It's like, he's not going to punish you. He's just going to, like, kind of look sternly and, like, maybe sigh a little bit when you get to heaven. He's not angry. He's just disappointed. He's just disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, right. But no, but just that that's a very real thing. And, and, and honestly, like, well, hang on, I would... hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What do you remember what your stepdad said to you specifically other than like, other than it being a God thing? It was just that he was like a little bit concerned that I might, you know, be gay because of that. Oh. Because you put your arm oh, around. Wow. Yeah. Cause he walked by you're while so I had like, my automatically went right. to that. Right. It was sort of that I was, you know, in a, in a pose or posture or like position right right that i was doing something that kind of hinted at that or or seemed like you should have like really quickly like slid it into like a headlock because that's acceptable (laughs) that would be acceptable (laughs) given that would be acceptable or something yeah Yeah. you'd be like oh just kidding noogie yeah (laughs) well and and so that's the thing is what i was going to say though is that i'm i'm actually would count myself as very fortunate in that interaction in that Mm. i didn't get beat up by my friends my stepdad didn't yell at me you know, he was operating from his own existing beliefs about sexuality and religion and masculinity and all of that. But I didn't get nearly as negative a response as I could have for that yeah, same sort of yeah. thing. Right. Um, and this was also with like my friends over too. like there was a bunch of us all hanging out that just happened to happen. And no one no one made a deal out of it. So I actually would count myself yeah. very fortunate in that. But a lot of guys yeah, would not have true. had, you know, even that civil of a response to it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then your thing, Dedeker, about turning it into a headlock, I think is, <laughs> is great because it does touch on, on this idea of, and I love that the term that Emily mentioned that we had read somewhere about women being tenderness entitled. And I yeah. did think it was kind of interesting to look at like, what an awesome, cool entitlement advantage that is that you have as women, mm, For sure, um, you know, and to mm-hmm. just kind of. Mm-hmm. Sure, like, we could have a whole discussion about entitlement and who's more of a victim than anyone else, and, like, that's not what we're talking about here, because that's not not the scope of this conversation. But I do think it's interesting to look at that that advantage of, like, that is something that you have, because, yeah, as a guy, from a very young age, we're not, it's not socially acceptable for us to touch anyone, really, unless it's violent. Unless it's wrestling. Like, that's why I think boys will wrestle so much or fight each other so much. It's because we as humans like touch, right? Mm-hmm. We want physical touch. But if you think about it, in our society, like, the only time it's acceptable for a man to, to really touch someone else, besides like a handshake, is if he's being intimate or having sex with a woman. Or that's it. Or I guess their child. Well, fuck, maybe. Fucking or fighting. It's just fucking or fighting. Fucking or if, fighting if or, or beyond, holding if you're your beyond child. Beyond the age of like, like six. The other exception. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But you can't. Yeah. Whereas, as you said, like as women, you can hold hands, you could cuddle, you can hug. Like that's more more acceptable for women yeah. to be able to do that. And I think that this is a big one to kind of be aware of. Like taking some. If we can all take some baby steps toward normalizing 
nonviolent, non-sexual male touch. <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> of of kind of accepting that, I think would be. But okay, I yeah, I just but like I I wonder like what are those baby steps? Because like that's so ingrained in us. Like if you just like reach out, Jace, right now, if mm-hmm. I like just wa- watch you, even as an adult man, mm-hmm. go put your arm around somebody, mm-hmm. like. Or, or like, grab another man's hand. It's, like, mm-hmm. immediately that's where it goes to. It's, like, either it's going to be a noogie or it's going to be something sexual. I mean, <laughs> not that, like, that's where my mind personally goes to, well, but it's, like, just that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the idea of consent? To be, like, hey, like, I want to hug you right now. Like, may I hug you or may I, like, put my arm around you? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe. yeah, we've talked about, like, how consent is a big thing that is taken for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in in some polyamorous communities as well, but if you were to ask someone and then do it, I don't know. Yeah, would that I've, help. I've also yeah. found that that my experience of of as like a fairly nonconformist guy that I've actually mm-hmm. found that other men are not as negative in their response to it mm-hmm. as you think they would be in terms yeah. of just mm-hmm. basic touch of kind of like putting your arm around someone or like prolonging that physical contact more than just a handshake or something like that, that there is something kind of nice about it. And I think they get that. And as long as it doesn't trip this like social alarm of like, Oh, I'm Mm. doing something that's not okay. I've found that actually guys really appreciate it. They really enjoy it. Um, I think because of that, because we're so starved for that affection and and human touch. So I would say it might not be, you know, use your own judgment and be safe out there, but I would say it's not necessarily this, as dangerous a thing as we think that it is. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think well, that in doing so this in too, go touch some people, but get consent first. <laughs> but yeah. Get consent <laughs> first. Yes. Yes. I had a really cool moment actually watching TV yesterday, where one of those ads for the helpful Honda people, you know, those ads where they'll yeah, yeah. do some like random act of kindness for someone. They did yeah. this one where they found this woman and her son shopping at a store, and they were like, "Hey, we're the helpful Honda people. Like, we're gonna pay for." you know, whatever you can fit in your cart in the next five minutes or something. They're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then at the end, like right at like sort of the last shot of the commercial is her her saying to, to the helpful Honda guy, she's like, is it okay if I hug you? And he's like, yeah, Aww. and they hug. And I was like, wow, what a cool example of consent in a commercial <laughs> that you almost yeah. never see, right? Like that, that interaction is so foreign yeah. to most people. But it's really cool, cool to be like, wow, that's awesome that she asked first and that they put that they didn't just cut to them hugging, but they put that in the commercial. I was like, that's yeah, that's, that's really one. neat. I really enjoyed that's pretty that. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm into that. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. So we would love to hear what all of you think about this. If you have some thoughts or there's something you felt like we missed or something that could be really helpful to other people, uh, write that in the comments for this episode on our website or start a discussion on our Facebook group, Multiamory. Or if you're in our Patreon, you can talk with other people about it there. We'd love to get you involved in the discussion, or perhaps come talk to us about it this Saturday at the Oaks Tavern in Sherman Oaks at 6 o'clock. But yeah, we we would love to get you involved in the conversation. You can also email us at info at multiamory.com. You can tweet at us at multiamory, or our Instagram which is multiamory underscore podcast. Podcast, yes. Yes, yes. Emily is our Instagram guru. Yeah, (laughs) guru. (laughs) Awesome. We would love to hear from you and get involved more with this community. So thank you all so much. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Next week.